Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card. I actually have three cards today. Uh, they all use the bouquet technique, which is a photography term for out of focus. And I'm going to show you how to do these three different backgrounds using three different mediums. So what I'm going to be using is some Strathmore watercolor paper. This is 90 pounds. I've got some white pigment ink. I'm going to be using color box and a sponge dauber and then just an assortment of circle punches. The first thing I'm going to do is take my surgical tape. I'm going to roll it up into a ball so that I'll just adhere the back of my cardstock so it'll be in place on my craft mat, but I won't be covering any of it on the front. The first background I'm going to create is using the Gonzai Tombi watercolor set. Uh, I have the 36 count set and each of the colors come in their own palette that can be removed from the box. Um, these are very opaque and rich and creamy colors. So I pulled three of them out, a green, a blue, and a purple. And you're going to want a big jar of water because these colors are very intense and so you want to really rinse your brush thoroughly. Now first I'm going to cover my whole cardstock in water and as you can see I'm using a very generous amount of water. My brush is kind of a, a wider, flatter sort of brush and I'm going to dip it in the water so just get a little bit of water. You don't want too much because you've already got a lot of water on the cardstock. So uh, I'm going to dip it into my palette and I'm going to um, kind of mix it up a, a little bit to get some of the creaminess going. And then I'm going to tap it onto my cardstock and move it around a little bit. Um, it's going to move a little bit with the water that's already on the cardstock. But notice I'm keeping my brush kind of slanted downward so that it's kind of flat. Um, and so that sort of gets me good, good um, coverage of the color. Now I'm going to rinse it off thoroughly and then I'll put it in the next palette. And this one is going to be blue. Now um, some people like to spray their palettes with water using um, just a spray bottle. I prefer to dip my brush in the water and put it into the palette because when I spray the palette it seems like too much water gets in there or it starts um, spraying outside like kind of the paint sort of bounces off and it gets on everything else on my craft mat. So anyway, I find it just as easy to dip my wet brush into the palette. All right, so I'm going to spread different areas of blue. Notice I'm not really going over the green, and I'm leaving some space for my purple. And so I'm just going to tap it all in there, and it really looks splotchy because these colors don't really blend a lot on their own. Um, I, I find that I need to kind of blend them a little bit manually. So I'm going to spray this again with some water, and you'll see that I'll go kind of back and forth to get this the way I want it. And by, by this point now, I've got quite a bit of water. Um, I'm going to take my brush that's rinsed so I just have water on it and I'm just going to tap the different areas but you want to be really careful because if you if you notice everywhere I'm touching it's getting a little muddy so you want to be careful not to mix too much and just really tap the edges just a tiny little bit because the the colors will mix and it's not going to look that good. So I'm going to work my way around with just this wet brush. See that gray area right there? Yeah, that does not look so good. So what I decided to do is take a tissue, just a dry tissue, and you can just touch the area and the tissue sort of soaks up the water. So I'm gonna go around and pick up the water um, where it's kind of pooling and uh, turning into more of a grayish color and I'm gonna remove that. So the nice thing about using watercolor paper is that you can pick the, the paint up and start over. So now that I've kind of cleared some of the areas, I'm going to go back in. I'm using some purple right now and I'm going to tap it in there in the areas that are now kind of white because I pulled the uh, paint off. Now I'm covering the lights so you can see because there was that glare. So here I've got a freeze frame so you can see what it looks like. It's a very nice vibrant color. So it was also pooling on the sides which is understandable because um, there's a lot of water on this this piece of paper. So I'm just taking my tissue and if you barely touch the edge it'll suck up the water. Um, and now I'm going to go in with my heat tool. I'm going to dry it up a little bit and then I did notice that the center was still sort of pooling. It was starting to get a little bit of gray so I took my tissue, wiped it up and then I used um, the green which is the lightest color and I'm tapping that inside and then I'll go around it a little bit with some of the blue just to kind of mix it up a little bit. You'll see it does kind of fade out the color as it dries. So you're not going to get as vibrant. Put a little bit of water in there and then just sort of let it let it go. Now I like, generally I like to um, leave my watercolor to dry on its own. I don't really like using a heat tool. 
um, if I can avoid it. Now you see there are some water spots on the right hand side and as I dried it you can see that they came became a little bit more pronounced. So I'm just going to take a wet brush and just go on top of those edges right there to get rid of my water line. Because the this bouquet technique is supposed to be kind of blurry so you really don't want any sharp lines. And so this is really easy to remove especially with the Gonzai Tombi, you just tap it with water and it, and it fades out. And then I'm going to dry it a little bit more with my heat tool. So here is the final product. There are some dark spots sti still, but it's not going to be perfect and I really like the way this came out. I like how you can see distinctly the greens and the blues and the purples, yet they're all sort of blended together. Now the next thing, the next background I'm going to do is using distress markers. So my first marker is a squeeze lemonade marker and as you can see it's pretty random and I'm keeping my pen just like I did the brush earlier, very slanted so it's almost flat against the table, um, parallel to the table. So I'm using the side of the brush tip and I'm just randomly putting this color to make sure that I've colored all the, covered all the different white areas and it's pretty random and it's not too bunched up. So then I'll take my uh, spritzer, the same one I used earlier, and I'm just going to spray this again liberally with some water. And you can see that the distress markers, and the same with the uh, distress ink pads, they really blend uh, quickly with water without much effort. So there's not really a whole lot you can do. Now I did take my brush to kind of blend a little bit of the areas that you can sort of see where there were some lines because I had drawn on it with the marker but very little areas did I, did I blend it. And you can see as I'm touching it, it's um, affecting the color and I really didn't want to affect the color too much. But you could see the red, how it's sort of bleeding into the other colors and it just looks so pretty. I just pulled a little color from a, the up, upper right, uh, put it down there at the bottom because I had a little white spot. And then I'm just gonna uh, take my tissue along the edge and just kind of grab that extra ink that's pooling on the sides you can see the tissue just sort of sucks it up and you really don't want to touch the cardstock because then you'll make a white spot. And uh, this one I actually uh, let, it, let it dry. So I just left it for several hours and, and let it dry on its own. All right, finally, I use the Peerless watercolors for this third one. So I store them in a notebook here, and these uh, colors are on cardstock. The paint is actually very intense, concentrated pigment on a piece of cardstock. So um, I'll have a link so that you can go off to see how I created this, this storage book here. But uh, I've got some Tombow Mono Multi Glue, which is uh, kind of a temporary adhesive after it dries. And that's how I adhere all these different palettes to this, these notebook pages. So I'm going to pull off the ones that I like. I've got a pink, an orange, and a yellow. Now I move them out of the way because this, uh, these Peerless watercolors are very sensitive. So if there's just a little bit of water that bounces off of it, it'll, it'll get on your craft mat and everything else that's around it. So once I uh, wet my cardstock, then I'll put my different palettes at the top here. So I've got a soaking wet piece of cardstock and I'm gonna take that same brush that I used earlier and I'm dipping it in some water, which is off to the side, you can't see it. It's just a glass of water and I'm tapping it in just like I did the first time with the Gonzai Tombi watercolors. So with the Peerless, you get a really intense color and I feel like this one, um, this third one here was the most intense of the three of them. Yet it really blends easily. You can see you could get dark areas and light areas and when they dry, it dries a little darker than the other colors, than the other mediums do. So I tap in that yellow and then I'll rinse my brush and get some of the orange. This is called orange yellow. And then I'll tap it in there the same way leaving some space for the pink. And you can see that this, these colors blend a lot more. They're more watery than the Gonzai. The Gonzai is more creamy, more acrylic sort of type. Um, and so these blend a little bit more on their own. And I wish I had left more blank space for the pink. I'm gonna pop some pink in there and fill in all the white areas. So I just I wanna make sure that I don't leave anything white. So everything's gonna be color, colored. Now, there were some areas that I wish I had more pink, so I kind of wiped it off with a tissue to make some space, and then I added some pink to it. There, I did it again, because there was a bunch of yellow there, so I wet it, 
again and then added the pink. All right, now I'm gonna spray it one more time. Actually get my palettes out of the way here. It's really amazing how this, this flat uh, pigment can lay on a piece of paper. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna spray it again and I'm gonna let this one also dry completely on its own and I didn't even touch that one. So here are the final pieces of cardstock that I've created. You can see how each one is just a little bit different in how it dried. So uh, now here comes the bouquet technique. So I decided to keep this really super simple. I'm just taking a post-it and I'm taking a one and three eighths inch punch, a one inch punch, and a three quarters of an inch punch. And I'm just gonna punch them out of this uh, post-it and then I'll use this as a stencil. Now I've seen a lot of people do, there are stamps that come with circles that you can do this technique with. Um, you can die cut some circles, um, you, you know, using some masking tape, uh, like the masking sheets or um, acetate to create a stencil. Uh, but this is basically the simplest way to do it and this post-it held up really well. So I took my sponge dauber and I'm coloring inside the circle um, with my white pigment ink. And then I'm gonna really just, I'm doing one circle at a time and I left enough space between the circles so I wouldn't have to worry about uh, white ink getting into the other holes when I was focusing on one circle. And so I'm gonna kinda just go through here, do some big ones, some medium, some small, and uh, you wanna overlap them also. So make sure you overlap the circles and some of them you can have thin, some of them thick like uh, as far as coverage goes so you have like a bright white maybe a faded white and just vary them and cover your whole uh, cardstock with all of these white circles now this is my last one and after I finished doing all of this with uh, the coloring of the of the sponge dauber with the stencil um, I took just my dauber and dipped it into my ink pad and made really more bright white dots. And these were gonna be the final small ones that I added in there. And I'm gonna overlap them on some of the other ones. You can see how they came out a little brighter. And that's it for this particular one. So I really like the way this one came out. Really pretty. So I'm gonna continue on and I'm gonna do this exact same thing with all three of these uh, backgrounds that I created. All right, here they are, all are, and I ended up using that one post-it for all of them. It held up really well. So they all just look a little bit different, um, different colors. By the way, the um, other colors in the Distress Marker one were pistachio and uh, festive berries. I forgot to tell you that. Anyway, so here's some vellum, and this is the Papillon Potpourri set by Stampin' Up!, which I think is probably my favorite butterfly set because it comes with two matching punches. So I'm gonna use some Versamark ink on vellum I'm going to stamp several butterflies and then I'll um, put some, uh, this is white embossing powder. I always get the ultra fine and then I'll heat it with my heat tool. Now I use a Stampin' Up! heat tool because it has a low and a high setting and I know I've talked about this before several times, uh, but the low setting, it's really just amazing. It takes a very long time so I skipped that part, um, but you get hardly, I mean basically no warping on your vellum. Okay, so this uh, punch punches the big butterfly. There's also a small one that punches the little butterfly. Um, and it doesn't leave any space, white space, around the butterfly, which I like. Now I decided to go back in on all the panels. And now that my white had dried, I'm putting another um, thick, dark, like kind of bright white dots using my sponge dauber, just to get a little bit more variation. This is Stampin' Up! Linen Thread and I'm gonna tape it to the back using my surgical tape and then I'll wrap it around three times, um, uh, my both outside ones and then I'll do the center one and then I'll tape it on the back. And I made them wider apart on the top and closer together on the bottom so that where they crossed was gonna be kind of in the lower half of the cardstock. And then I made a bow separately and put a glue dot where all of the threads were crossing and I just put my bow right on top of that. And I did this three times for the three different pieces. Um, now this is a four and a quarter by five and a half folded. So you see I'm folding it here after I score it down the center. And then I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna score kind of the first solid line you come to, which is about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna score 
a quarter of an inch down from that and then another quarter of an inch down from that and that's just to add a little bit of interest to the white portion of my card and notice that I'm uh, scoring the inside of the card so that the marks kind of are projected outward when I'm looking at the card. I'll slow it down here so you can see. So I just got a few lines above and, and below uh, so it's not just plain white. Now I've got my Misty again. This is my second time using it and I am going to put a video up um, of how to use it and what I think of it. So far so good. I really like it a lot. Um, I'm going to do three different sentiments. If I was doing one it'd be great because then um, it'd be easy. I'd just stamp, stamp, stamp. But uh, I'm going to do three different ones. This one is Get Well. So I'm lining it up where I want it and then I'll close the lid and it'll stick to the top. And then I'll ink it up with some Versafine Black Onyx ink, which is my favorite ink for clear stamps. And then when I shut my lid, it will go exactly where I uh, set it up the first time. And you just put a tiny little bit of pressure and it stamps. It stamps very well. So I did that on all three different sentiments. I've got my ATG gun. I'm just going to adhere this to the card base that has the score lines in it. And then I'm going to take my butterflies and I kind of uh, bent them a little bit so the wings were up. I put a glue dot. I use my paper piercer most of the time, um, but I'm going to show you here. You can fold it a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to crease it. And then you can actually touch the butterfly to the glue dot and the glue dot comes off the uh, roll and stays on your butterfly. So I'm going to have my butterflies sort of hanging off the top and bottom. I'm going to do that all the way down and then I'm finally adding some pearls just for a little extra touch. These are Stampin' Up! pearls. And I added four of them. I thought that would be enough in between the butterflies. There are three different sizes. I use two medium, one small, and one large. And that is it for the card today. And uh, you can see the pictures of the other ones finished, but I finished them the exact same way as I finished this one. And I'm going to show them to you here. So here's the one I just created. Purple, pink, and green. This is the one with the pistachio, the festive berries, and the lemonade. And uh, this is the one with the peerless watercolors. So anyway, three different options depending on what you have on hand. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.